I'm just actually uh, broadcasting from the International Center for Leadership, Diplomacy, Economic and Human uh, Development, you know, where the Imo State, Nigeria. So uh, for my time now, this is about 10 minutes to 10 p.m. West African time. And everywhere you are, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. All those who are watching all over the world, uh, it promises to be a wonderful time today because I will be talking about something that I have seen that is one of the reasons why Africa and why Nigeria, my wonderful country, is underdeveloped or is finding it difficult to develop. And one of such reasons is because of weak or no attention to human capital development. Weak or no attention to human capital development. So I wanted to just uh, pick up your pen and where you are, your paper. It promises to be one of those outstanding times that we're going to be inspiring each other and then doing the needful as it relates our contribution towards the development of our country and our nation. Let me also let us know that uh, the African Development Network uh, TV is a subsidiary of the Fade House uh, TV and this uh, training session or discussion about the development of the continent of Africa is part of our commitment to see that we have a better Africa. I've, I've been so worried about uh, the way things are going for a long time that after 60 years of uh, several nations in Africa have gotten their independence, it's almost looking like uh, maybe from what someone said that Africa needs to be recolonized because after our independence for 60 years, Nigeria, Ghana, Togo, uh, Burkina Faso, Mali, uh, Guinea, Conakry, Liberia, Cameroon, Cap Verde, and uh, what of you is almost looking as if that we actually retrogress within these uh, six decades of independence. So it now uh, it has opened my commitment to see that we do the needful in making sure that we don't repeat the mistakes of those who have gone before us. This uh, broadcast is uh, strategically sponsored by Faith House Transmission Assembly, uh, the church, the non-cultural, non-ethnic, non-denominational, uh, non-racial church system that has actually sat down to create the values that we are pushing, and also the Leeds Faith House group of companies that is actually pushing the financial aspect of uh, what we're doing and the I Gold Africa. I Gold Africa means Initiative for Good Governance, Leadership and Economic Development. We have just one vision and it's very clear. We're just trying to strategically uh, build up uh, leaders, transformational leaders in all spheres of society to make sure that we build a kind of synergy of uh, professionals, of uh, people of integrity, people who have vision, visionary people whether you're a plumber, you're a student, you're a blacksmith, you're uh, a chief executive officer, a politician, uh, an entertainer, you're into music, you're into sports, our arts and culture. We believe that as we work uh, with the vision that you have, we partner with each other to see that we do the needful. And if you are just coming across us uh, for the first time today, please make sure you get to our YouTube channel and then let's get connected and also share the video and keep the notification buttons and the, and the bell ringing. And once you we drop any video, you'll be able to get that. Okay, let's just go into uh, what I earlier announced that we're going to be looking at today. We're going to just be talking about the concept of uh, a weak or no human capital development in the continent of Africa as one of the things that have made the country, uh, the, the nation not to develop, the continent not to develop, our communities are not developing, and uh, we're just praying and we're just believing that one day uh, something will just happen and then, just like I said in the last two videos, and I said that only God cannot change Nigeria. Only God cannot change Africa. We just pray a lot. We celebrate mediocrity a lot because God is even so worried about our prayers because we are not uh, mixing up uh, pragmatism. We are not uh, 
mixing up uh, innovation with our prayers. We are trying to insult God because God is a creative God. God is an innovative uh, entity. He has boredom and we're just like relinquishing our responsibilities to him and can I shock you a little bit? He is not interested in your cries because he has deposited a lot of human resources in the continent of Africa. And all we just need is to make sure that we put our resources together, put our intelligence together, tap into the best things that he has made available for you and I, and then we make progress. Uh, let me just start by reading some few things because we're in a training session I, I don't want to just sound like one of those motivational speakers trying to inspire you i try to take the things systematically so that you can understand where we're going all right uh, i guess your friends are there with you or your brothers or you're just linking them up and it's going to be wonderful as we listen let me talk about the need uh, for human capital development so if nigeria and africa are going to achieve the status of a first world nation, human capital development must be given utmost priority. Human capital development must be given utmost priority if Nigeria, if Africa, if Ghana, if uh, Liberia, if uh, um, Ivory Coast, Kenya, South Africa, Cameroon, uh, Uganda, if uh, been a republic is going to experience development if we will not consistently allow the dollar the Deutsche mark the yen uh the pound sterling to mesmerize and rip our economy or our currency uh, we must make sure that we give attention to human capital development is not is a non-negotiable system is a non-negotiable factor in the development of any nation before we can talk about a first world nation second world nation or third world nation we must make sure that our human capital development base must be given proper attention let's go it's a to truly build a nation with a robust economy to truly build a nation with a robust economy we must invest in human capital development a look at the sustained growth of the economy of the first of most first world countries or nations will reveal to us that their economic prosperity is as a result of how committed they are to human capital development so a nation becomes a first world nation without a nation cannot become a first world nation without first and foremost using time and intelligence and technology for developing our human capital it is important we know this as africans as nigerians everywhere you are watching me all over the world it is important we know that prayer cannot change nigeria that wishful thinking cannot change nigeria all we just need is to have the right leadership right personalities people of integrity people that have vision people that are passionate and find those people get involved in several leadership positions in education in politics in economy in governance uh entertainment media sports uh, what have you medical science uh, information technology as long as we have the correct people in such places who are absolutely committed to human capital development once we don't have them it is difficult for us to be called a first world nation it doesn't matter how much we pray because this thing is not a record science it's something that is very systematically programmed and we must subscribe to it because this is one of the things that have made america what it is today it is one of the things that have made united kingdom what she is today so what then is a human capital development for those of you who may not understand or probably you know I, I, let me just read this and it's going to interest you he said the concept of human capital uh, refers to abilities and skills of human resources of a country you have to understand that human capital is different from human capital development i'm going to just go through it again the concept of human capital refers to the abilities and skills of human resources of a country why human capital development refers to the process of acquiring 
and increasing the number of persons who have the skills, education, and experience that are critical for economic growth and development of a country's economy. The number of people, as long as we have, uh, let's just say for instance, you have 100 people in a country, and in that country, you just have about three people who have the necessary skills, who have the necessary education, who have the necessary experiences, technological experiences and skills. As long as you have them in a reduced uh, percentage, let's say 20 to 80, if the population is 100, you wouldn't experience development as such. But when you come into a country, and this country has about 100 people, and you have about 90 people or 85 people who have access to these necessary skills, necessary technological exposures, who have this necessary education, uh, domicile in that particular nation, you will discover that there is a high level of improvement, development, transformation, civilization that would definitely go on in that particular uh, jurisdiction. So having laid that foundation, it is important for us to also know that it is the volume of these people, the percentage, the high percentage of those people in that particular location that would definitely determine the growth, development, uh, the growth and development of the country's economy. So the, every country's economy is dependent on the number of uh, human capital that have actually been developed. Let me just give an example. People are just like praying and doing fasting, asking God to change Nigeria. It's a very simple to get the right people in leadership. And once you get the right people in leadership, people who fear God, people who have integrity, people who believe in uh, uh, human capital development. And as long as they open up the channels through uh, uh, increased education, uh, empowerment of all sorts, you will find that, that over time, more people will grow up having the necessary skills, deploying their intelligence, deploying their exposure. And before you know it, there will be uh, productivity, before you know that there will be creation of jobs. And over time, within a space of time, you will discover that that country will move away from being a third world nation to becoming a first world nation. America wasn't the way it is now, but a lot of things have happened because we have a lot of people in America who have a lot of skills to display. And it's just like there. And before you know it, America is now becoming the heaven that is on the earth. Okay, let me just uh, go a little bit for you to understand. So from the definition above, you will realize that the population of any nation makes up the human resource in that nation. These human resources possesses certain amount of skills, abilities, and knowledge that are needed to develop that nation. If it is the skills, abilities, and knowledge of the populace that determines how developed a nation becomes, then it is of utmost importance that every nation that desires development and economic growth should be committed to increasing the number of people with those skills, abilities, and know-how. You know, I've just explained that to you. And uh, 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 let me just ask you a question. What kind of skills do you have? As an African, everywhere you are, what kind of skills do you have? Uh, what kind of technological know-how uh, do you have access to? You know, most times we find it easier to blame the government in Africa. We blame the government. Yes, we have a very funny and crazy government system. But you need to know exactly this truth. Uh, you are part of the problem of your country as an African. I'm sorry to say that anyway. You are part of the problem if you do not have a skill, if you're not contributing anything towards the development of your nation, of your community, of your state. Whatever I am doing now, I actually, I, this is not, uh, is not uh, what I studied as a first degree. I'm going to come to that. It's not about the degree that you studied. Uh, when we talk about human capital development, it's not about certifications. It's not about somebody having a degree. And I, I, I did my first degree in microbiology, uh, parasit uh, parasitology, to be precise, virology and parasitology to be precise options. And you know what? Once I began uh, to get involved in this issue of uh, human capital development, I had to go and study law, I had to go and do a postgraduate in peace and conflict, 
I had to go and do a, 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 another postgraduate in international relations and diplomacy. I'm pushing up to, uh, on uh, having a master's degree in leadership development and a PhD in uh, international relations and diplomacy. So you, you, you find that, that I'm trying to uh, build a strong uh, uh, education, a strong skill uh, so that I, I could actually make my contribution. I could actually uh, make a strong contribution towards the development of my country towards the development of the continent of Africa. Uh, what are the things that you're doing as a person? Uh, this is the main point of the reason why we're doing what we're doing. It's not about the education. It's not about the certificates you have at your disposal. Do you have the skills? Do you have the technical know-how? And this is one of the things that Africans have not sat down. We Africans have not sat down to understand and reason out. We have so much intelligent people around us. Yet, there's no enabling environment because of wrong leadership. Everything is politicized. Politicians hijack the environment and stiffen it and make it uncomfortable for people to have access to this technological know-how, education, uh, skills, uh, uh, tools that are needed to improve the development of the continent of Africa. Let me also read some few things uh, for us to understand. Uh, you know, I just mentioned that it's not about a degree. A, a wise man, an economist by Derek, Derek Bork. Derek Bork says, let me read for you what Derek Bork says. He said, economists who have studied the relationship between education and economic growth confirms what common sense suggests. Economists who have studied the relationship between education and economic growth has confirmed what common sense suggests. And common sense and these economies, they suggest that the number of college degrees is not nearly as important as how well students develop cognitive skills such as critical thinking and problem solving ability. That having university and college certificates is not the same, it's not as important as how these students have access to development of their cognitive skills such as critical thinking and uh, problem solving. This is where most people are missing out on this. You know, separately, we have seen a lot of just like you and I, my father will always ask me to have five credits including English and maths so that I could actually go to school and graduate and have a good job and get employed in a good company because you need to have the first, uh, those five credits perfect. It was wonderful. But over time, such kind of things do not work again. And I'm, I'm disappointed my father, why, as it were, because I, I, I didn't go to look for a job. I had to sit down uh, for close to 20 years now. I have taken a journey in personal development, in increasing my cognitive skills, in problem solving. All the nations that have actually become a first world nation is a problem solving nation. Such nations have more people solving problems for them than contributing problems to the society. Unlike what we have in Africa, unlike what we have in Nigeria, we have more than 90% of Nigerians are just roaming around the streets contributing to the problem of Nigeria. Most uh, uh, Africans and African nations and citizens in such places, they are all there to keep contributing to the problem of uh, their nation. Uh, whether they are politicians, whether they are technocrats, whether they are uh, jobless young people, or uh, whatever it is, you know, life is all about option. Uh, there's unemployment in Africa, there's unemployment in Nigeria, but not everybody that is unemployed is involved in brigadage. Not everyone that is unemployed is involved in kidnapping. Not everybody that is unemployed is involved in rape, is involved in uh, uh, hostage taking, is involved in assassination, uh, business deals, dirty deals. Not everybody is involved in vote buying or hijacking of ballot box.
boxes is all about a choice that you've decided on your own to to make and you are contributing to the degree of disorderliness you are you, you are increasing the nuisance value of the state where you are you know entropy is the degree of disorderliness of a system so when somebody is not contributing to the development of an environment be it a church be it a mosque uh, uh, be it his company his or her company or his street his county his village his community his state his nation such kind of person is increasing uh, the, 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 the rate of entropy this uh, he's multiplying nuisance he's he's increasing the nuisance value of that kind of environment and what do you expect? You're going to have chaos. You're going to have bring a danger. You are going to have uh, 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 people who are, uh, uh, who are living, but they are very obscene in their thinking. And it's going to increase the, uh, the, the, the underdevelopment. You're going to be increasing the underdevelopment of that society. Why? Because you've not taken some time to build yourself, to have the necessary skills. People should, why should people be scared that you, are, you, you just pass and everybody is hiding their phones? You, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are increasing the, uh, the disorderliness of that environment. And most people that do such things may have some degrees. They may have some certificates. They are just bothering people. You are, you are putting a weight on the, on the meager resources. You are suffocating the meager air, the oxygen that people are breathing. You shouldn't be alive. Let's just open up and ask some practical questions. And most of people just like, you're trying to blame uh, United Kingdom, you're trying to blame uh, United States, you're trying to blame the, the, the so-called superpowers. These people have taken some time and they're working on their nation. They have their own problems. But I've come to discover that most of us in Africa, we are just like slaves that like their chains. We're like slaves that like their chains. I don't envy anybody anywhere, anywhere all over the world. I'm a full African, I'm a full Nigerian, and I'm a full Igbo man. And more especially, I'm an addicted follower, an unrepentant follower of the Lord and my Savior Jesus Christ. And I believe that I have what it takes to bring transformation in my community, in my city in my state and it has become something like a mantra for me that everywhere i am i bring on unusual training unusual uh, transformation in that system because i've taken some time to build uh, uh cognitive uh, uh, reasoning cognitive thinking and problem solving so if you want to be part of the people that will cause unusual change in the continent of africa unusual transformation and increase the development of the continent of africa you and i must make sure that we give attention to human capital development it's not just about graduating from school just like what we see around everywhere people have graduated from the school system or whatever they cannot produce anything you just roam around the street go for nigeria go for national youth service call somebody just graduated and he has wasted about one year waiting for national youth service call why because the person cannot create value in the things that he or she uh, has actually taken about four, five, six years to study in school. Uh, let me just explain to you as I begin to wrap up. Human capital development is beyond just having college degrees. It's about having the necessary skills and the know-hows to drive economic growth. The importance of human capital development in the development of nations can never be overemphasized. And he said the studies have shown that nations with sustainable economic growth are those that have used their wealth of time, that have used their wealth of time to develop their human capital. As I begin to wrap up, I want to just show us something because I'm trying to make sure that you, you get everything in the service and then we, we, we make progress. According to a report, I'm going to read for you a report that is very critical. According to a report by the World Economic Forum in 2017. According to a report by World Economic Forum in 2017. I'm trying to read it verbatimly so that you can understand where we're going and know why you and I we must partner 
We must work together. We must believe in each other. We must make sure that we share ideas, exchange uh, 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 information to make sure that our country, our nation becomes the best. And he says, the Global Human Capital Index of 2017 ranks 130 countries on how well they are developing their human capital across four dimensions. I'm going to take some time to talk about the four dimensions in the next broadcast. This Global Human Capital Index of 2017, they ranked the development of their human capital in four dimensions. Number one, capacity. Number two, deployment. Number three, development. And number four, know-how. And as well as across different age groups, by reason of this description, which I'm going to do in the next video, because of capacity and time, below is the list of a few nations and their ranking. Please pay attention. I'm going to take some time to do that in the next video. That you 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 need to you need to get that video once it comes up. Norway ranked first with an index of 17.12%. Norway ranked first with an index of 17.12%. Finland ranked second with an index of 77.0%. Switzerland ranked third with an index of 76.48%. United States of America ranked fourth with an index of 74.84%. Denmark ranked fifth with an index of 74.4%. Germany ranked sixth with an index of 74.30%. New Zealand ranked seventh with an index of 74.14%. Sweden ranked eighth with an index of 73.95%. Slovenia ranked ninth with an index of 73.3%. Austria ranked 10th with an index of 73.29%, while Singapore ranked 11th with an index of 73.28%. Could you imagine that among the countries that I were just mentioned, you didn't find any Africa? Uh, let me just shock you a little bit as I begin to wrap up for now. When we began to look and trace Africa down, I would like you to see the ranking for some selected African countries according to the same report, the same standard, the same configuration uh, submitted uh, 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 towards uh, the, 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 the ranking uh, platforms or whatever uh, uh, parameter that was used to discuss about this index. It was reported that countries from the sub-Saharan African had the lowest ranking. This is unfortunate. It was discovered that countries in the sub-Saharan Africa had the lowest ranking in human capital development. Even though we have natural resources, even though we have millions of people coming out of schools every year. Rwanda ranked 71. Out of the uh, 150 countries, Rwanda ranked 71. Ghana ranked 72, that's 72%. Cameroon ranked uh, 73 position, they were 73 in the position. South Africa, they ranked 87. Ethiopia ranked 127. And my country, Nigeria, ranked 114. Could you imagine that out of 130 countries, Nigeria, 114 close to Ethiopia that is 127 with so much intelligent people oh my god this is sickening and this is 2017 and this is 2021 as I'm doing this broadcast you could imagine the deterioration you could imagine how far things have gone bad and this is one of the things that African Development Network is committed to to creating an environment where people don't just graduate from the university and they cannot contribute anything towards the development of uh, their community. And this is one of the things 
And the reasons why we set up the Leech Edge University is one of the reasons why we set up the, uh, the Fade House Leadership Academy. We set up the Leech Edge Primary School. We set up the Leeds Fade House Group of Companies. We set up the Leadership and Integrity Club. We set up the uh, International Teenagers uh, Club. We set up the Transform Women's Team. We set up the Transform Men's Team. We set up several leadership teams and several leadership forums. We set up the Girls and Ladies Leadership Ward. And all those uh, packages. All of them are geared towards making sure that nobody comes around our system without a getting him or herself empowered, without increasing his worth in society. What am I talking about? We cannot uh, just pray and expect that our country will change. Our continent cannot change until we give attention to the subject matter of human capital development. Human capital is just the number of people who have the potential, who have this potential in the form of skills abilities and education but the more people that have access to these it will give back to human capital development so the processing of the skills and multiplication of the same skills in uh, several people is what is called the human capital development and as long as the human capital development index of a country is increasing automatically the company the, the company the organization the church the community, the nation, and the continent will definitely improve. It's not rocket science. So all the countries that were listed, uh, whether they are Finland, United States, Switzerland, Germany, New Zealand, uh, uh, Slovenia, Austria, or what have you, these were people that gave attention towards the development of human beings that are living in that community, in that state, and in that nation. All right, my beloved, I'm done with you for today. Uh, please make sure you click on the notification button should the case will come across your path again. And I know that you have been inspired to be the best. You have been inspired to get your skill. You have been inspired to stretch yourself as an African everywhere you are. Please, one thing you must do, let's partner with each other. Look at the screen immediately. Call the number that is on the screen. Check up check us up on the website let's have an inbox chat us up and share also the video to millions of people millions of africans let us know that it's time for africa to rise again it's time for you and i to make our own contribution it doesn't matter what you're doing whether you're a student whether you're married or not married whether you're a muslim whether you're a christian it's immaterial whatever it is you are involved in business you are involved in entertainment arts and culture uh, medical science you're a pharmacist you're a plumber uh, you're a tricycle seller you are a, you, you you deal on agricultural produce or whatever it is let's work together because it's a huge project the african development uh, 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 project is something that we at the african development network can never really get to the background. I want to take out this time as an unrepentant follower of the Lord Jesus Christ to pray for you. Um, I want you to know that it's going to be a wonderful time for you because your vision will excel. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that everything about you will succeed. As you begin to give attention and unburden yourself and receive the mandate to serve people, I pray you will live long. I pray you will live to fulfill the visions in your heart. I pray that every part of you will be restless until you see the light of the vision that you have. I pray for people to bring you supply. I pray for uh, the blessings of God in everything that you do. I ask that he shall give you sound health to drive the vision you have in your heart. And I also pray that you will rise up to become the great person, the great leader that your community is waiting for. I ask that he shall give you the faith, the confidence to drive the process. I also pray that God is going to give you the capacity to bear the pressure, the challenges of driving a fresh vision. I also pray for you that you're going to meet the right mentor. You're going to meet the right people. You're going to meet the right environment. You're going to meet every human being that you need in order to drive everything that is in your heart. And I also pray that you have the sensitivity of the spirit to know when you need to run and when you need to wait and when you need to think. I pray that God shall speak to your ear 
for you not to walk into error, for you not to get into corruption, for you not to step out when you are still in the process of being made by a mentor. I pray for you that time will never be taken uh, away from you. I pray that the wisdom needed to take advantage of time, to take advantage of resources will be made available to your life, to your environment, in the precious mighty name of Jesus Christ. Before I leave you, I'm your friend, Barisi Kenna Emmanuel, the International President of the African Development Network. And I want to let you know that we're here to make sure that your vision comes to fruition. Till I see you next time, do have a nice day. Thank you.